Our lesson today is Hagar and Ishmael are not forgotten and it's found in Genesis chapter 21 verses 8 through 20. This is Sunday school lesson for January the 9th, 2022. My name is Tony Miller and a key verse for our lesson today is found in the 18th verse of the text today and it reads as follows and God heard the voice of the lad and the angel of God called out to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her what aileth thee Hagar fear not for God had heard the voice of the lad where he is arise Hagar lift up the lad and hold him in thy Hand, for I will make him a great nation, Hagar, and Ishmael not forgotten. Let's move on. So the aim of this lesson is to discover how God was with Hagar and Ishmael and believe, believe that God is at work even in the midst of hopeless situations and trust. In God's presence provision even when experiencing injustice this is my YouTube channel again well over 270 lessons are in my archive I ask if you would please the subscribe button and that notification bell and you get my lessons automatically like my lessons leave me comments thank you so much for those who did this week give me the heads up where they're caught where they're from you could do it again next week I just want to know where we're sending these lessons share my lessons leave me comments they all continue to encourage me to share god's word with you let's move on so how did we get here in this lesson today that's what background i'll give as we move forward in this lesson amen again this lesson in the book of genesis share this background and then we'll move on into this lesson amen so this week all started at the flood where god will he restart humanity with noah and god made a covenant with noah that the day of vengeance would come upon man that god judges all of his people and i tell you so many times that i believe there are billions of and billions of people who were who died in that flood based upon the numbers People did not die in that level in that, in that period of time. So thus the math says that that's the, the state of affairs. And only man's only thoughts were continually evil. And God would regret that, regret that he even made man. And, and God will judge all flesh in the flood. God will restart man with six people, Noah, his sons and their wives. And this event happened some 1,500 years after God had made Adam. And God gave the instructions to Noah. He told him to, 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 to create a government and shall have no gods before me. And he will never eat anything that's, that's have uh, blood in it and require the blood of anyone who takes another person's life. And he says, he'll kill the wild animal that takes a, takes a life. And anyone who murders a human must die. And if anyone takes a human life, that person's also be taken by the hands of humans. For God made human beings in his own image. And then God wanted the most important thing he wanted them to be fruitful well the second first is mo no gods before me but the second be fruitful and multiply and repopulate the earth again a restart of humanity let's move on and the descendants of this one noah the one who would build an ark that ultimately he would have three sons and their wives and shem one of his sons that he would uh, repopulate the area of the east and he this people would be have uh, religious fervor and their appearance would be dusty or what we call olive skin and then Ham uh, would be his other son that he would have this physical endurance and and his uh, the appearance of his um, descendants would be black and, and the other son was Shepha and he would be the one who would who would uh, who would um, inhabit the region of Europe and, and ultimately in Asia and they went to intellectual power and they would be fair skinned or what we would say very white near and these are the sentence of of Noah Noah would have we don't know who how Noah was before he was but these are the sons and this is the appearance of the sons they all look different and ultimately they will repopulate 
the world. I said that that Ham would go to the south, and 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 and, uh, and Japheth would go to the north, and ultimately to the east, and and our Fixad would go to the Middle East, and that's where they would inhabit the regions all about this region where they were fruitful and multiplied and re-inhabited the earth after this flood. Come on. And the Sham would repopulate the the the, the region. Of the Middle East and the 26 nations, and and there would be the Persians and the Assyrians and the Babylonians and the Lydians and the Syrians and all those folks. So those are the ones that he would repopulate. Those what we know them as today. Let's move on. And Ham would repopulate the 30 nations of Africa that he originally would start, and there were the Cushite, the Egyptians, and the I'm mean, Ethiopians, and then the Egyptians and the Lydians and then the Canaanites. We know well about the Canaanite people, all of those ites, those who would come from the, the descendants of Canaan. These are the generations of the people who are descendants of Ham. And Joseph with the 14 nations of the of Europe that the that the Caucasians and the the Polish and the Bulgarians and the Medes and the Persians and the, the Greeks and the Italians and the French and the Portuguese and the Romans and the Turks and the Russians, the Germans. These are the people, the nations that would be the descendants of Jaffa, and ultimately Asia and, and, and uh, India as well. Next slide. And then 700 years after this flood, that all the people ascended in that region I share with you that they would go back still and contrary to the will of God that, that God would restart man again but now that, that mankind had gathered in the Persian Gulf region the place that they were called Babel and there that they followed the leader and the man named Nimrod who was a descendant of Ham and he, they wanted to build a tower they thought that they were greater than God and they, they rebelled against God and then and the Lord miraculously scattered them changing their language, confusing their languages and, 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 and race in order to forcibly distribute them all over the face of the earth. It took them 107 years to build this tower in that time. There was about 920,000 people on the earth. They were fruitful and multiplied. They were replenishing the earth. But they were contrary to God and God was not happy even after this flood. And then later God would call this one man Abraham. Abraham or Abram at that time is he would call out of sinful humanity again. That he even his people were idol worshippers and they chose and God would chose Abraham and he would make a cup Abraham and make a covenant with this one Abraham. And he said, I will make you a great nation, I will bless thee, and I will make your name great, and, and thou shalt be a blessing to all of the generations of man, and you will be this great nation too big to even count God called this one Abraham this chosen man who will hopefully have a chosen people next one. God will make three promises to this Abram and he said he would make him a great nation he will make his his name great and he will be a worldwide blessing and it would come through this Noah and Moses and David and Jesus would all be the fulfillment of the promises that God would make with this one man, Abram, whose name will become Abraham. Let's move on. Another share with you before that he would be from the lineage of Shem. And through the lineage of our fixed and and it's and, and Abraham's father was Terah. And, and, and Abram would have two children that would be both significant in our lesson today that that would be that would be Isaac and, and, and Ishmael and we'll share with you as we move forward in this lesson I also want to mo focus on this one lot because he was part of the lesson uh, a bit uh, as a uh, part of the history of this this one Abraham Abram and, and these are the descendants of Abram and these are his brothers that will be Haran and, and Nab Nahor. Again, part to help you to understand where we're traveling 
along our journey today. Let's move on. In, in Genesis 12 and 1, now the Lord has said to Abram, get out, get thee out of the country. All your folks were idol worshippers. Get out of the country and your kindreds and thy father's house and you go into a land that I will show thee. Again, God had chose this man. He told me he has to leave the sinful condition he was in and move to a place that God will show thee. Let's move on. Amen. And this Abram, you'll be in from the Ur of the Chaldeans, right? And he would leave there from the uh, from the Ur and he would head to Haran. I share with you Haran before the map. That'll be a brother of his father, uh, Terah. That Iran was there, and his brother, his his cousin Lot, would be with him, as well as his wife. There'll be Sarai. At that point, her name was Sarai, and there, these people would go to his brother's house, and then they would travel on down through the region adjacent to the um, Mediterranean Sea, down into through the land of Canaan. I share with you the descendants of Ham and down through this region, all the way up into Egypt, again through this region of those descendants of Ham into Egypt, and then back through the land of Canaan. And I share with you that Jerusalem is part of our lesson, is, is called, uh, is called uh, Bethel as well, you see in this lesson, and in Beersheba is another place that we'll see in this lesson. I, sh I share with this map to give you some perspective of the places that we are in this land of Canaan. This is the promised land that run runs adjacent to the Mediterranean Sea that God will make a promise to this Abram that he would say that, that this land is as far as you see is this promised land that ultimately being given to your descendants. It gives you some perspective of where we are in this lesson. Let's move on. Amen. This man will be called Abram. At the age of 70, God would make this call to him. And then I share with you that he would he would leave the earth and he would go to Haran. And there he would pass through Canaan that I share with you. And he would sojourn over to Egypt. And there in Egypt, he along with his wife, that they will be there. And you know the story that he would, that his wife wrote me, she was a beautiful woman, that she would go into the, the Pharaoh's household and she would have some issues that 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 ultimately, but in in her leaving and when they left this Egypt, that she would take a handmaiden, someone who loves her, that someone who who met her when she was in the harem of the pharaoh. And this woman, she would take, uh, she would befriend this one Sarai, and 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 she would want to be her handmaiden, and they would leave this Egypt, heading on back to Bethel. I share with you that would be Jerusalem. And there, there's one Lot that would be there. I share with you about this whole discussion of Lot. And then he would have this battle with these Melchizedek. And then God would give them this thing about these sacrifices again. And that promise that God would make him, the promise of a, of a child that God would make him, that he would give to this one Abram, that ultimately Ishmael will be born. And I'll share with you the story of that later in this lesson. And God would demand that Abraham that Abram and all of the people of this house will be circumcised, circumcised and every child by the eighth day will be circumcised. And God will, will ultimately have uh, Abram go and save his, his uh, nephew Lot uh, and Sodom and Gomorrah. You know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah where God will send, send hell, fire, and brimstone down and destroy that city. And God, Abram will sojourn to Gira. Uh, and then ultimately Isaac the promised to one will ultimately be born. And then this one, Ishmael, the first son, will be kicked out. That's the narrative of where we are. I wanted to give you some perspective that, again, there's a circumcision would happen at, at age uh, 99. And the child, Ishmael, was born at 88, 16 years after the, the, the promise that God would give this man. And then the one, uh, Ishmael, will be born at age 100. Give us a perspective of where we are the life cycle of this one man, Abram, one of the feature, one of the people influential in our story today. Let's move on. That's our background. About fifteen minutes of background. Let's move on into our lesson. Amen. So 
for the people that are part of this lesson today. The individuals will be Ishmael. Ishmael, the one that will be the child that will be born from Hagar, that handmaiden of Sarai. And then, and, and again, that, uh, that, that, that she would be an Egyptian woman who would, would be a maid, someone who is one who works for Abraham's wife, that they would ultimately have this first child again at 86. And then uh, ultimately, there is Sarai or Sarah, her name was changed. And Sarah would ultimately have the, the promised child, and that would be Isaac, the one that God told him that he said that it was going to be through your seed, Abraham and Sarah, not Abraham and, and Hagar. So the promise would be through the one Isaac that promised that God would make to this Abram, the progenitor of the Hebrew people. Let's move on. Our lesson starts in uh, Genesis chapter 21 and verse 8. So I thought it's important that I give you the first seven verses. And again, it kind of leads us as an on-ramp to our lesson. And it gives us some perspective of where we are as we move forward in the text. And verse 1, it says, Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, or Sarai, as her name was already changed now. And and, and God said, and, and he said, And the Lord did for Sarah what? He did had it what he had promised. That God told Abraham and Sarah, and remember she laughed. And at the point when when he when he promised her to have a, a child at her old age, is no, that's not even impossible because there's she's well beyond the age of childbirth, at least in that region, in that part of the time, that part of her life cycle. And verse two, and 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 Sarah became pregnant again at this advanced age, and and she bore a son to Abraham. Again, this progenitor of this Hebrew people, and, and Abraham in his old age, a hundred years old, and it was at the very time he had promised him. And verse 3, and Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son that Sarah, Sarah born him. And again, when he was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as the God has commanded. I share with you as part of that timeline that God had made the requirement for everybody in his household to be circumcised. That's how people know if you were a Hebrew that you were circumcised. Boys were circumcised in the eighth day. In the eighth day. And Abraham was a hundred years old when Isaac was born to him. And Sarah was ninety years old as well. And Sarah said that the, the Lord that God has brought me laughter. So remember at the time when she when 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 the angel told her that she was gonna have this this, this child that she laughed and then, and then, and 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 God says and, she, and God has brought her laughter now and and everyone who who hears about this will laugh because she says that that uh, who would have said that Abraham and Sarah would 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 nurse a, a child that a ninety year old woman is is nursing a a child when typically it's found in someone in their teens and twenties and thirties and maybe into the forties forties but yet have borne him a son at his old age that now this Abram a hundred years old and Sarai Sarah now 90 and it's this lesson now fast forwards to our lesson text today let's move on amen so our lesson today is Hagar Again, that that Egyptian handmaiden I share with you that that would that would come and, and would would come to be and work with this Sarah and Ishmael, her son, the the one that they would um, they would have she would have with Abraham. Again, I will share with you more about this as we move forward in the lesson. That they are not forgotten, and we'll move our lesson today again, Genesis 21, verses 8 through 20. And we'll begin in, in verses 8 uh, through 11. I'll use the New Living again. And let's get on into this lesson in verse 8. And that child, uh, that would be, that would be uh, Isaac. It grew up and was weaned. And, and Abram hay and made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. So we don't know that probably by weaned, maybe, maybe two years old, maybe something like that. The text does not tell us exactly, so we can make some conjecture. Basically, maybe this is probably in that area. And and, 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 so, and Sarah saw the son of Hagar, that Egyptian woman, 
her handmaiden, which was born unto Abraham. That child was born unto Abraham, mocking her son Isaac. That's what's happening here in this text. Verse 10, and therefore, wherefore, said, and she said to Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be the heir with my son, even with this one Isaac. Again, obviously the energy of the of, a, of this jealousy, of this 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 uh, resentment, or this uh, this rival one, and 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 she was no long, no doubt not happy with this one, this this Egyptian woman, and now this this she sees that 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 her, that her son is is mocking, and maybe just. That's his younger, younger, son, younger brother. So maybe they're they're interacting, but but that's not how she perceives that she perceives it being mocking. Again, that she has had problems all the way when that woman was born. I mean, when the, when she was pregnant and all, and and she would and she would leave early because she did not like the circumstances she was in. That again, this was not her decision. This was her 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 her. Uh, her handmaid who, who told her that she wanted her to have this child and now she would have this child and ultimately she is now dealing with some circumstances that were not in her control. And verse 11, and the one, and the thing, and the thing was very grievous to Abraham. Abraham's sight because of his son. Again, this is his son. Let's magnify some points here as we move on in this text. Amen. You have to recognize that Ishmael was Abraham's only son. Remember? And, 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 and now there's in the past 13 to 16 years, this is the only child that this one would have. And remember, he was conceived at the age of 88. So now you're 88 years old and for 88 years you had no children. And now you've gone through all kinds of things. And now you have this son. And, and, and now that you are now... 13 to 16 years of, uh, that that you that this child has now been your one and only son Hagar gave him the son and, and and she no doubt the light in the fact that she was a bond woman she was a slave but she was she was special in the eyes of this one Abraham because she conceived and gave him his one and only son for some 13 to 16 years and even though she was a bond woman she was a slave but she felt some kind of special it's only natural that her maid, Sarah, would be jealous and envious of this woman because this woman was able to do what she was not able to do for at least this 13 years. But also remember that this whole, this whole deal, this whole concoction was her idea in the first place, that Sarah concocted this idea. So reap what you sow, let's move on, amen. After God had appeared to Abram and and, and 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 promised him a homeland and a heritage, and then ten years went by and Abram and Sarah were, were still had no baby, and in this impatience of Sarah, Sarai at that time she took matters into her own hands and she gave her husband uh, this her handmaid, and and he, and he did go and sleep with her, the slave, and and then and, and perhaps. I can build a family through through her is what she was thinking that that she'll she's my property that that I I can still build a family with this one maid this one slave of mine and and Hagar Hagar became pregnant pregnant and conceived this one Ishmael. That's how we've gotten here in our lesson today. Let's move on. Amen. Hagar and Ishmael are not forgotten. Verses 12 and 13 of the text. And God said to Abraham, again, this is his wife is kicking out this, this, uh, this maid and her son. Let it not be grievous unto thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bond woman. Or another text says, don't be distressed because of Ishmael and your maid. And all that Sarah has said unto thee, again, God is speaking unto, to Abraham, Abraham, and he says, hearken unto the voice of Sarah. Listen to your wife, for Isaac, thy sh Isaac shall, thy seed shall be called. Excuse me, and verse 13. 
and also the son of the bondwoman. Again, Isaac is the seed. Isaac is the promised. Isaac is the one that the that the the, the Hebrew nation I share with you before that that the the descendants of Isaac will be those twelve tribes. His name will become Israel, and we have those twelve tribes. They'll call in the future. Verse three, thirteen, and also the son of the bondwoman. I will make a great. I will make a nation because he is also thy seed and the promise that God made was through this one Abraham God keeps his promises next line God did not want Sarah and Abraham to focus on their plan B God didn't want them to focus on this this Ishmael he wanted to focus on Isaac. Isaac was the promised firstborn. The firstborn male was important because he was believed to be the, to represent the prime of the human strength and vitality of the family. <clears throat> he was the opener of the womb. And as a result of the firstborn son became the primary heir to the family, the firstborn, the firstborn's birthright involved a double portion of the household, estate, and leadership of the family. And if the father became incapacitated or absent for some reason after his father's death, the, the oldest son usually uh, cared for his mother until the death are provided for the unmarried sisters. He is the true, the new and true head of the family. And thus it's important. The plan B would not have worked and would not have worked in God's plan because number one, if they concocted a plan, that plan B, and God's plan was always through Isaac, the one that we born from Abraham and Sarah, not Abraham and Sarai. I mean Abraham and, and, and Hagar. Let's move on. I share with you again. That again from a fixed art to terror to Abraham and Abraham would have again this Isaac who would be the 12 tribes of Israel and and, and uh, our Jacob Isaac and Jacob Jacob would be the 12 tribes of Jacob Jacob's name would be turned to Israel I mean, spoke earlier and Ishmael would be the the Arab nations that will go forth let's move on God will keep his promises move on At verse 14 of the text. And so Abraham rose early in the morning, and he took bread and skim and a skin of water. That's those animal skins that they would fill with water. They didn't have a cup or a container or whatever at that time, or a water bottle, right? And he gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder. And along with the child, he sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. And I share with you on the map where Beersheba was. It was in, uh, near that Egypt of a region of of of, uh, of, of Egypt and around uh, Canaan. It was just south of the Dead Sea, as I share with you on the map previously, just to give you some perspective of where that she had traveled, again being cast out of where they were at that moment. Amen. Let's move on. Hagar and 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 Ishmael not forgotten began being cast out and, and God will preserve this Ishmael and Hagar in the desert in verse 15 through 18 of our text let's move on and when the water was gone the water that he had put in the skin that, that he put uh, that she put the boy in the shade of a bush again and then she sat down by herself about a hundred yards away and said, I don't want this to watch the boy died because they are in some measure of wilderness and then and they are again with no provisions and she says as she burst into tears she didn't want her son to die and she didn't want to die as well but verse 17 but 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 God heard the boy crying and the angel of God called to a Hagar from heaven I love that part that that God heard her from heaven God's angel says, Hagar, what's wrong? Don't be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Verse 18, go to him and comfort him. For I will make a great nation from his generations. What God says, 
this is the key verse, verse 18 of our text. Hagar and Ishmael are not forgotten. Let's move on. God has not forgotten him. He says, go and comfort him. And God will make a promise to this one uh, Hagar about her son that she will make him a great nation from his descendants. Next one. Yeah, and that God has the power and authority of his word is speaking and it will happen. And there it is, Ishmael will be the progenitor of the Arab nations. That's what we know about that today, even today. Let's move on. Hagar and Ishmael, not forgotten, maybe the last two verses of our printed text. For God opened Hagar's eyes. And sometime in all of our problems that we're having, that sometimes God needs to open up our eyes like he did here in this, in this, with this one Hagar, and, and she saw a well full of water. And she quickly filled her water container and gave the boy a drink of water. Remember that water ran out some time ago in verse 20. And God was with the boy. God was with the boy. God made a promise and God was with the boy as he grew up in the wilderness. And he became a skillful archer. We know that the Arab nations all are part of that whole desert and, and region, and that's where they grew up. That's where he would be the progenitor of that people, and he became a skillful archer. That ends our printed text. Let's move on to close. Hagar and Ishmael are not forgotten. Amen. We know that in our circumstances that maybe we seem real bad and not really not that cool to what's going on with us, but we know that all things work together for the good for those who love God, who've been called according to his purpose, that this Ishmael has a purpose, God has a desire, I mean, Hagar has a has a, a purpose for God because she brought in this child into the world, but, but God, things work together for the good. It's good news for us, right? Even in the dire circumstances, all things are working together for our good. Amen. Let's move on to close. So 2021 is over now, and 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 2021, what, what, there were, it was a good year, but it wasn't probably our best year that and that 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 he, and, and, he, and even in the circumstance of this this hagar that that, that she could say that all oh, that last year is over and now there's a new year there's a new circumstance that that god is treating us differently that 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 the things that 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 happened to you were were not in your control and just like us the things were not necessarily in our control in 2021 right the things that, that happen are just wrong, right? Things, many things happen for us wrong. Now, a lot of things happen to it great, but I'm just saying there's still, there's a lot that happened in 2021 that we could come back and reflect on that, that, our, that our family and friends may have turned on us because of all the things we were dealing with. We're dealing with different people are dealing with circumstances or, or we're just not being responsible, whatever, that this is what happened to her and this happened to us as well in 2021. That, that 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 we may have been unfairly judged, just like she was. That 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 we just got a raw deal, and that's what it feels like. At least for some of the things that happened to me in 2021, and then I may be the same with you as well. That that 2021, you just got a raw, raw deal, and and sometimes people mis misunderstand or mis they mis they misjudge your intentions, like in this case of Sarah and of uh, uh, Hagar and. Uh, Hagar and uh, and Ishmael that that maybe he was just just making fun of his, his little brother I don't know and and again she was like whatever the other again the jealousy and envy and all that stuff is all is what's happening it spills all over us and even though it's nothing that we had anything about it that that jealousy it can all cause problems right the negative stuff happens and negative stuff happened in 2021 I know for me as well that. For no good reason, that there's sickness and all kinds of losses and and friends and families and this problems and and whatever the job and our health and this whole COVID nineteen and all this stuff and homes and business and all kind of craziness have been going on. But twenty twenty one is over. Twenty twenty one is over, and the circumstances of of Hagar and Ishmael, they're 
they're they're in this wilderness where all seem all bad, but it's all over. God has now got your back. Let's move on to close. Amen. God has not forgotten you. That God did not forget Hagar and Ishmael. That's the focus of our lesson. That God has not forgotten us as well because God sees all right. He saw the circumstances. He's heard the boy crying. He heard our cries as well of all the things that happened to us in 2021. And God hears our cries. But also God has our back. Just like he did with Hagar and Ishmael. That he's got our back. And God's promises are never broken. He told this. He made a promise to Abraham that he was going to be a father of many nations. He made a father of that he was going to bless his, his seed, and he's doing that, even the one that they did a plan B, that, that, that God's promises are never broken. That God is a deliverer as he delivered them from their circumstance. He delivers us from our circumstance. He's a sustainer, even in all the problems that we would have and all the problems we had last year, that God is a sustainer. God is powerful. That God loves us. He loves his people. He loves them. And, and even... And God is even there in our darkest hours. That, that, that the, this image that I share with you, the footprints in the sand, that even we don't feel like God is there, but God is there and he's taking us through the circumstance. He said that even this boy, that all the rest of the days of his life, that God will be with him. That God loves you. God is powerful. God is a sustainer. God is a deliverer. God loves you even in your darkest hours. And those footprints in the stand. And God will provide all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's the promises we have as we move on into 2022. That God is not against you. God is for you. And Romans 8, 28 things that all things work together for the good, right? It's always, even though we think that it's not, it always does. That you are not the head. Then you are not the. You are not the head. Uh, you are. You are the head, not the tail. That you are royalty. That you are. You are. You're chosen. You are redeemed. You are set apart. You are anointed. You are loved by Almighty God. That God will answer your prayers just like He did in the circumstance of. Ishmael and Hagar. We just have to remember to send our prayers up to God. Like I said, we send big and miraculous and bold uh, prayers to God because God is a big God. He can answer all the prayers. And in 2022, we need to send big prayers to God. God answers our prayers. And I don't know about you. I think in this anointed moment, when the Spirit of God is moving in the midst of our circumstances at this moment, that 2022 I will make will, will be an incredible year I, and I declare and decree this at this moment that this will be your best year ever at this moment in the spirit of God I said and declare and decree that this will be your greatest year ever and that is our Sunday school lesson this week God has not forgotten you my prayer for you that God continues to bless you in 2020 that this message that you found something in it that strengthens your faith the Lord provides all your needs you learn something worthy of sharing my prayer is that God will provide all your needs according to his rich and glory by Christ Jesus in 2022 thanks so much for your time Amen.